me on the agenda today with my good friends uh, Fred Marks and Peter Boss, and and uh, it's a huge responsibility for me to keep up with these guys. But uh, I think I do have a few little pieces of history that might be interesting for you. Um, I would like to ask a question because so many of you I know are, are graduates of Course 100 and B50. How many took uh, Course 100 from Galambos? Okay. So not too many. And how many took courses from Jason Nelson? Wow, everybody. Okay. How many don't know what we're talking about here today? <laughs> okay, yeah, thank a you. Bit. <laughs> well, my story begins in, in, uh, in night. Some of you have heard the story. In 1960, uh, I, I finished my training in orthodontics at the University of Iowa, and I settled in San Pedro in 1959, 1960. And uh, of course, in Dell School, they train you when you move to a new community. The first thing you do is uh, to get yourself known. Of course, you have to join the Chamber of Commerce, and then you join the uh, service club of your choice, and then you go and support the political party of your choice. So I did that. I joined the Chamber of Commerce, I joined the San Pedro Kiwanis Club, and I went down to the Republican headquarters and I said I'd like to volunteer my services. And they said, thank you, we appreciate your volunteering, please come back tomorrow night at 8 o'clock and we'll give you your assignment. So the next night, 8 o'clock, I showed up at Republican headquarters, there were probably 15 or 20 of us, and they said, you'll receive your assignment now. Uh, when we, you leave here, you'll be going out into the various neighborhoods in San Pedro, you're going to tear down the signs of the political opponent that we're supporting, and we're going to put up our signs. <laughs> and so, and the irony of this is that that I picked up the Palos Verdes news yesterday, and we're having a big campaign in San Pedro to see whether or not we can expand our community college uh, of Marymount Palos Verdes. And it's very divisive. There, there are signs everywhere. And so I picked up the paper, and here's this letter saying, there are culprits that have gone out and torn down our signs, and it's a felon, and don't do it anymore. I'm gonna look for your license plate and get you in jail. So nothing has changed over 50 years. Fascinates me. However, uh, fortunately, at this, at this gathering at the Republican headquarters, I for formed a friendship with a man named Leonard Stern, who was an engineer at uh, North American Aviation in those days. And uh, Leonard uh, and I struck up some conversations, and he said, uh, it kind of looks like you're finding something wrong with the political system here. I said, politics is not for me. This is ridiculous. And he said, he started talking to me a little bit about some free market ideas, and, and uh, I went through the evolution that many of you did. Uh, he insisted I read Law by Frederick Bastiat. Mm. And my eyes sort of started to open up a little bit. And, uh, and then my next book, how many of you read the Bastiat for your first book about, about these ideas? Oh, yeah. Okay, book number two, Atlas Shrugged. Oh, yeah. How many read that Just one from the second, first or second book? Absolutely eye-opening. The, 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 the scales fell off my eyes a little bit further. Uh, my third book was uh, Economics in One Lesson, Henry Hazlitt, another classic, of course. And, uh, and, and by that time, I was, I, I was a hard sell. I mean, I was convinced that, that uh, the government is out there to take care of us, and all these government programs are wonderful. And it was very, very difficult for me, but Leonard pers persevered. And um, I, my fourth book was uh, the little pamphlet, uh, Planning for Freedom by uh, Von Mises. Great books. I love returning to all four of these books. And uh, uh, it, they just seem to ring truer every, every time that, uh, that we have contact. <clears throat> Fred, I'm taking the rest of your water. I hope you don't mind. Uh, thanks for leaving a little bit. Um, so anyhow, uh, Leonard kept working on me, and uh, uh, one of Leonard's neighbors across the street was Alvin Loi. I'm sure almost everybody here knows Alvin Loi. And he uh, was, at that time, an instructor. This is probably 1961 or so, 62, I guess it was. And uh, Alvin was the instructor for the, uh, for the Free Enterprise Institute in uh, Torrance. And Leonard said, you're going to take this course. And I said, look, I'm busy, I don't, I'm starting my practice, I don't have time to take any courses. Leonard said, you will take this course. He absolutely would not let me get out of it. And of course it was, uh, you know, just a, a totally incredible experience. So I got to know Alvin Loi very well, signed up for the course, and um, in those days, the very first course that we, that we, uh, we took was course, 
It was called Course Number One, and it was called uh, Destination Freedom. Now, anybody else in this in this class? Okay. Uh, it was a five-session class, and it was taught by Galambos in, in uh, Long Beach or Torrance. And, uh, and, and uh, the purpose of the course, oh, thank you, another fresh glass of water, all right. I may not be able to drink all that, but I'll do my best. Um, so Destination Freedom was, was a five-session course. Its purpose was designed to get you to sign up for Course 100, it was called in those days. And uh, so uh, Galambo said, uh, and this, little, this is my pamphlet, I'm, I, as you can tell, I'm a pack rat. Still got this from 1962. Mm. Uh, okay, let's get this country moving again, he said. And uh, once we do get it moving, which way will we be going? Backward or forward? Socialism via bureaucratic controls will move us back to the days of the pharaohs. Well, it was a great session. Uh, there, were, there were five, and uh, one was cap what capitalism is and what is, is not. The uh, best way to fight communism. Uh, Freedom's secret weapon, capitalism, of course, free markets, the greatest crime of all time, and capitalism, the wave of the future. And he warned, of course, for the, the things that Fred uh, uh, was talking about that we're going to be probably experiencing before our lives are over, but one never knows. Uh, so, of course, of course uh, destination freedom was great, and then we, we proceeded into the uh, course with, uh, with course 100 with Alvin Loy. Uh, Alvin Loi was an engineer, is an engineer, and he'll be here tomorrow. I hope all of you who have an opportunity to talk with Al do so. Uh, Alvin uh, uh, was a, a, a graduate student and uh, UCLA, a PhD candidate, and it was during that time that he met Galambos. And uh, they, they, they formed a close friendship, and uh, in, incidentally, if I get the facts wrong, Jay, or uh, 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 Peter, <laughs> You've all lived through this, and uh, so you know if I get off the track, please, uh, please uh, mention it. Um, so Andrew, w uh, pardon me, uh, uh, Elvin was an engineer, and he and, and uh, Columbus got to be uh, good friends, and uh, they 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 discussed philosophy and science and history, and and, uh, and they sort of got on the same wing, wavelength about having the possibility of free markets. Um, in those days, uh, Galambos' history, uh, he was actually born in Hungary in 1924. His family moved to New York, and, and uh, he eventually went to Carleton College in Minnesota, received a uh, uh, graduate degree, a master's degree in uh, physics. And uh, he moved to California, I think, probably in uh, uh, the mid-50s, and uh, worked at North American Aviation. and. Uh, Alvin Loi also worked there when he finished his training at uh, UCLA. And uh, Galambos was a, we can tell from those, his history that he, he was a born teacher because while he was there at North American Aviation, he actually had classes during lunchtime and it was called the AAA, AAA Lectures. It stood for Astronomy, Astrophysics, and Astronautics. And these, these lectures were very popular. Uh, Galambos was a, was a genius, as you all know from his, the wonderful work that he's done. He proposed to the head of, of North American Aviation at that time, uh, and I think his name was George Mueller, he said, I, I can recommend a possibility in the future that we can have commercial flights to the moon. And of course, uh, the head of North American Aviation said, well, it's impossible, dismissed Galambos on the spot. George Mueller went on to become the head of NASA, the Apollo project, I believe, at NASA. So he caught on pretty quick. So anyhow, so that meant that the Columbus was no longer welcome in North American aviation. And he took a position at Whittier College, uh, also teaching physics. And again, his, his, his direction of, of being a teacher uh, again, was uh, realized when he started teaching classes there uh, in some free market ideas, capitalism and uh, free market ideas. And uh, uh, he chose the, unfortunately, he chose the time, uh, I think Whittier College was, is a Christian college, and, uh, and they had, uh, the students that were, were requested to attend chapel. And unfortunately, Galambo selected the same time to do his lectures on capitalism 
And so he pretty soon was no longer welcome at Whittier College. Uh, he, he then, uh, at, at this time, he uh, uh, became very interested in, uh, in uh, Goldwater. He read the book Conscious of Conservative, which many of you know, and uh, which is which is uh, has Goldwater's name on it. But most most of us feel that it was actually written by Carl Hess, who was a great libertarian, fabulous writer, wonderful person. Uh, many of you remember his article in the Playboy magazine. It was called "The Death of Politics," and he really predicted the the demise of uh, the system that we're uh, forced to live on under here today. But in any case, uh, Columbus was very much influenced by this book. And so he went, he actually made an appointment with, with Goldwater, went to Chicago, and met with Goldwater, and found out that Goldwater was just another politician, I think. And so he, Columbus at that time, I believe, became quite disillusioned with uh, politics and uh, returned back to LA. Uh, he and, and Alvin Loy continued their friendship, and uh, I think under, uh, under Alvin's influence and recommendation, they decided to, to go to New York and meet the people at Fee, uh, Leonard Reed, and, uh, uh, and uh, Rothbard, and uh, I think they had contact with uh, Brandon, and, and uh, 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 who am I thinking about? Uh, <coughs> Nathaniel Brandon. And Mises. And Mises. All right, so uh, that was a very influential time in their lives, and uh, they started to see the possibilities, and I, I, they went on this trip in their car, and they were driving back from, from meeting in New York, and uh, I think that might have been the, the germination of the Free Enterprise Institute. I think Alvin Loy made a major contribution, but it was certainly Columbus who, who was the major figure in the, in the movement then. So they came back to uh, California, and so I think it was probably around 1950 that, that uh, the Free Enterprise Institute was formed, and uh, and they started giving courses, uh, uh, the Destination Freedom course that I talked about, and of course, and there were other courses that Galambos taught. Um, he taught physics, he taught uh, uh, astronautics, uh, he had the fabulous course about, uh, Fred Marks mentioned uh, Thomas Paine, they had a course, uh, I think it was entitled uh, Thomas Paine, Author of the Declaration of Independence. And it was an extensive argument that, that the words of the Declaration were actually uh, Thomas Paine's. So there were great courses, and uh, those of you who were in the, in the course remember how the lectures went. It usually take a little bit longer than they were announced. I think it was, they were supposed to be two and a half hours, and many times they went four and uh, on and over the night. I, they were long. And uh, uh, so, the, as far as the content of the course, uh, uh, course 100, uh, many of you are familiar with, with the basics. Uh, Galambos, of course, being a scientist, spent a lot of time going over with us the history of science and uh, how science works. Uh, he, uh, he was very clear that we had, uh, what did he call it, semantic chaos. That uh, many of the words that we use, like freedom and, and, uh, uh, and, and capitalism and so forth, uh, uh, were very vague, very ambiguous. So he, he precisely defined uh, freedom as that uh, societal arrangement wherein each person has 100% control of their own property and zero control of anybody else's property. And so uh, that was a pretty clear definition. Most of us uh, felt okay about that. Um, he, he, had, he had other definitions, of course, uh, he defined uh, capital. First of all, property. His definitions of property were extremely important. As you know, he, his ideas of property was foundational to his work. I know I'm repeating this for you, so familiar with these ideas. Uh, he defined uh, property as three different kinds of property: your your life and your non procreative derivatives from your life. Uh, and then there was primary property, which is your ideas, your intellectual estate, and then third would be the kind of property we talk about usually real estate and, and, and uh, uh, common property. So again, good definition. We have, we're, most of us are living with these definitions still. Uh, 
capitalism he defined as that uh, societal arrangement where uh, uh, property is protected 100%. So uh, that was an interesting uh, definition of capitalism and, and uh, it seems to be a good working definition. Uh, again, continuing with his scientific method, he had his two famous postulates. Postulate number one, uh, each man lives to pursue happiness. And postulate number two was, each person's definition of happiness is equally valid. So, please get your V50 lectures by Jace Nelson, and you will have these ideas uh, expanded upon and explained much, much more clearly than I certainly can do. And I hope you will all do so. Uh, one of the, my, I don't, Charles, didn't you didn't announce my, my title properly? It's Andrew Galambos, Freedom's Eccentric Genius. That was Charles's uh, 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 title, and uh, so I'm trying to live up to that. Uh, one of Galambos' eccentricities was that he never wrote a book. And of course, uh, hmm. as you know, in science, uh, you're not. You're not doing it until you have it written down so others can examine. The scientific method requires a substantiation by your colleagues. So this is certainly one of his eccentricities. Um, after, after his uh, death, Columbus uh, died in, I think it was 1997. And uh, unfortunately, uh, much of his, his material, his, his lecture notes and tapes and so forth, uh, were taken in the, uh, under control by uh, the trustees of his estate. And uh, many of you know the story that uh, it's been very difficult to, to retrieve these, these wonderful materials. Um, however, the, the, uh, the, the trustees did publish in uh, 1999, I believe it was, uh, the, the big book of Galambos's lectures of the, of course, 100. And the title was uh, Sik Adra Sik Astra. Did I get that right, Spencer? Sik Adra Ad Astra. Anybody seen the book? And how many have you read it? Fantastic. It's 900 pages, this thick. And, uh, and it's fascinating. If, if you haven't had uh, exposure to this book, by all means, please do. It's still in print at uh, Amazon. And uh, it's a little expensive, though. How much does it cost? $500? So, so instead of buying that book, you can get this one. This is called Thrust for Freedom. How many have had exposure to this book? OK, so uh, this is a, is a synopsis of, the, of Columbus's ideas. And um, the author, it has Andrew Galambos' name here, but of course he did not write it. It was written by uh, Peter Sisko. Anybody know Peter Sisko? Okay. So anyhow, uh, certainly uh, during the other, other eccentricities of uh, Galambos was that uh, over the years he had very close a relationship, for example, with Alvin Loi, and uh, yet, as uh, in, in uh, probably uh, late the '60s, uh, they had a total falling apart, and uh, uh, they were not able to reconcile. Uh, and uh, I think uh, it was a very unfortunate situation because Alvin Loi contributed so much to uh, to the Columbus uh, uh, courses and, and uh, thinking and writing. Uh, and certainly Jay Nelson also has had this experience. Uh, Jay uh, uh, also was dismissed by our eccentric friend. Uh, but Jay moved on, as you, as you all know, to uh, form his own organization, the Institute for Human Progress. And uh, his, his great lecture career has influenced, uh, as, as Fred mentioned, uh, thousands and thousands of people uh, in this country and around the world. So he did have some eccentricities, but Certainly, his uh, his contribution to the uh, theory and, and practice of uh, free markets and capitalism has been very substantial. So, uh, get some copies of Thrust for Freedom. Uh, it's a great book to give your friends to get them started. And uh, uh, if you have any questions, I would be glad to attempt to answer them at this time.
can't, I can't stress enough the importance of making sure you have either a disc copy or a download of uh, B50 Illustrated by Chase Nelson. And arrangements can be made at the table in the back. So I thank you very much. I think Sharon has a question, oh. a question right here. Yes. Yeah, I just wondered where is that book available? Is it in print? Press, press for Freedom? Amazon, sure. Okay. It's in not there. available here today, though, is it? This weekend? So. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you.